laptop. Okay. <laughs> yeah, great. Well, welcome to the uh, first preliminary group meeting of the of the sure, 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 not a problem uh, for the summer series. So uh, we do have a lot of ambitious plans. Welcome to everyone who joins this meeting, meeting for the first time. Um, so today's meeting will be very brief and uh, informal. We're just going to uh, plan at least next meeting. And then there will be a couple of uh, uh, reports of either novel discoveries or dry runs of the, of the talks. So uh, David is, needs to present at a conference uh, tonight. So he presents at Hawaii uh, Material Research Society conference. So he will present at about 9 p.m. Fargo time, which will be like early afternoons there. Uh, and he will just show, show to us. And then uh, Mead is going to share uh, some research uh, discoveries or seeds of research discoveries right okay and the plan for the semester will be split it maybe like 30 and 60 percent first month you'll get uh, an overview of some technologies of some uh, skills that are not uh, that were not covered in the course uh, but are quite useful for for research procedure and we will arrange it in a, in a way maybe like four four meetings where uh, there will be a sign up list so about four or five presentations each week so some some of you participated and presented previous years uh, this year we'll first try to involve um, those who didn't present and then if if you are short on those then uh, you'll repeat maybe presentations from those who, who did it in the past. So uh, what is the goal and which skills are we going to cover? Um, right now it is not in, in the writing, but it will be in the writing and materials uh, will be distributed to all attendees. So first, right now we have meeting number zero, so it's not counted. Uh, first meeting uh, next week will cover any basic skills that were just missed in the course like uh, how to treat spin orbit coupling and how to compute uh, spectra with spin orbit coupling, things like that, uh, and overview the preparation steps for molecular dynamics. In week two, we will overview computing of so-called non-antibiotic couplings, which are key uh, parameters for exploring what is going on with uh, any molecular systems uh, after photo excitation? So, if it, it interacts with light. Uh, on the week three, we will overview the dynamics of electronic states that uses couplings as, as parameters. And on week four, we will uh, uh, overview observables that one can extract from such dynamics. For example, uh, photoluminescence or uh, you know, some uh, conductivity, current, and uh, maybe maybe other properties. Um, so probably I will just send sign up list uh, with invitation to speak on one or other subject by email shortly after after our meeting. So if anyone is interested to uh, present or have some, some favorite subject, just send an email. You'll arrange everyone, everyone who wants to speak to speak. Those who do not like to speak, you'll have chance to postpone it. Um, how does it sound? Is it? And OK, yeah, thank you, Amir. Uh, thank you, everyone who raised the thumb. <laughs> So um, after we are done with these uh, skills, we will go to research updates. And since the amount of uh, group members, uh, visitors, attendees is a little bigger uh, than previous years, it may last for, for a couple of months. So um, those of you who are visiting these meetings for years just can repeat what you typically do, whatever project you uh, uh, explore share a presentation those who were taking the course in the in the spring 
uh, and did present like five minutes presentations uh, as a final for the course, you'll have a chance to expand and present this uh, material for like an hour, uh, show more mistakes and show more chances for those who attend your presentation to ask uh, constructive questions. And those who didn't start yet, still like in a month, one can just overthrow the earth. It's enough to uh, generate something new. Uh, so far, so good. Okay, and David left. <laughs> Did he type it, or or you just read his mind? <laughs> okay. So, uh, David, would you like to speak next? Not particularly. <laughs> but you you have a chance. Thank, thank you for coming. So, um, do you need the credentials to share? Uh, it doesn't seem like it's in the other. Okay, so uh, today David needs to present in public, and uh, now he presents in a most friendly audience who will ask most friendly questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay go ahead maybe enable your microphone and i disable mine so that sure. they... can you hear me <laughs> oh yeah excellent oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh disable uh, sound here um So I am looking at the effects that combining two separate two-dimensional lead halide proskites into a vertical heteral structure has on their photophysical properties. And I cannot see my little figure. Um, but the... So I'm looking at the lead halide proskites because they are popular candidates for our op next gen optical electrical devices due to their quantum high quantum yield, um, color purity and tunable emission. Um, and the reason I'm focusing on two dimensional proskites is their increased stability when compared to the bulk proskite. And the 2D proskites also the structure of them gives us a nice effect where we see a natural quantum well like structure, which induces both dielect dielectric and quantum confinement effects. So what I mean by the two dimensional lead halide is here we have a lead halide and it's separated by an organic ligand. And then we have another lead halide here and it just repeats and this forms a thin film. So the models that I'm looking at today specifically are a model here where there's a single perovskite layer, a single th of single thickness, and and here we have four perovskites thick in the perovskite layer, and then here we have a vertical heterostructure structure where we combine the two single layer perovskites. So I did this calculations using non-collinear spin DFT, including the spin orbit coupling interaction in VASP using the GGAPB functional and the plane wave basis set with projected augmented wave pseudopotentials. My adiabatic molecular dynamics calculations were calculated at 300 Kelvin using one femtosecond time steps. Here we see the ground state observables of ground state observables. The top two figures represent the density of states for all three of the systems, where the heteral structure model is the blue, and the n equals four model is the red, and the n equals one is the purple. And we see that the heteral structure model for both the valence and conduction band shows a very similar structure to the 
hetero structure model, except the hetero structure model is approximately 0.2 EV higher in energy com when compared to the N equals four model. Um, the bottom left figure is a projected density of states for the hetero structure model. And the major thing that we see from this is that the initial band, subband, is composed entirely of the n equals four portion of the perovskite, where the n equals one perovskite doesn't start contributing until the second layer. And if we look at the inset, we can see that the organic plays very minimal effects near the band edge where the this is the absorption spectra and we see a similar effect as we saw in the DOS where the hetero structure is about 0.4 EV uh, higher in energy when compared to the n equals four but shows a very similar structure here we see our non-radiative dynamics so the top figures are the Redfield tensor plots and the higher the power, the faster the those two orbitals will interact. And we see these double features due to near degeneracy in our model. The bottom figures are a non-radiative relaxation path with an initial excitation, which was chosen. Um, the initial conditions were chosen based on the oscillator strength. They are the highest oscillator strength that did not include the prime principal band gap degeneracies or near degeneracies. Here we see the radio dynamics. So the blue figures are time re resolved and the graphs next to them are time integrated. And we see, and I realize that now that I need to label these yet, we see that the single layer, which are the ones on the left, if we look at the homo lumo transition in the time integrated, we see that there, the hetero structure homo lumo transition is two orders of magnitude more intense than the single layer models. And our table here shows the photoluminescence luminescence quantum yield of these models, and we see that the hetero structure has approximately doubled the quantum yield of the single layer models. And this is the charge carry dynamics. So we're looking at the log of the lifetime of the excitation versus the excitation energy. And the thing to note from these graphs is that we see linear features for the hetero structure for both the hole, which is the top, and the electron, which is the bottom. And this corresponds well with the band gap law. And um, so in conclusion, we see that the combined the single perovskite layers into a hetero structure. So it's a blue shifted ground state observables when compared to the larger of the two single layers involved in its creation. It shows two orders of magnitude greater photoluminescence intensity when compared to the single layer. And the relaxation rates are good align with the band gap law for the hetero structure model and the single layer models at high, at higher energy. And I would like to thank my group members and whatnot. And, and that's about two minutes too long. <laughs> okay, uh, please uh, join me. In uh, thinking the speaker, <laughs> where, where, where is what? I'm just looking for a symbol of a cloud. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are, there Are there any questions? We got several in the chat. Maybe, can, maybe let's keep chat for, for the. Uh, I can last. figure out where chat is. Let's check if anyone has questions. First, uh, in person, second. Verbally in uh, Zoom and then read chat. So the band gap law is related. <laughs> it 
it's related to the the Boltzmann distribution of the excitation energy of the excitation. I need to look that up again. <laughs> Everything's correct. Um, but the idea is that it's it's a logarithmic relation. So we expect that these logarithmic lines, or if I go back to the plot, we we expect them to be linear if they follow the band gap law. And I, yeah. So the larger the energy, the longer the relaxation. Um, in general, yes. Is it enough or you want more details? OK. Uh, more questions in, in, in person. Either, either questions of curiosity or questions to please the speaker. Ah, I found chat. <laughs> What are you showing with the inset graph? In the so the in, inset graph is just a higher energy range okay. than the, the regular graph. So the regular graph, the energy range isn't high enough to see the n equals one model outside of those three points. I do have some experimental data, but it doesn't really correspond to anything I'm showing. Um, it would both correspond to the MDPL graphs. Um, I have not found quantum yield data for the he vertical hetero structures. Um, all I've found is simple emission spectra for it. So before anyone finds your results right or wrong, you can claim that your results have predictive power. <laughs> 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 Guiding the experiment. <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions? In, in person. Otherwise, I'll start reading chat. Uh, let's check for for online. Uh, so, so. What? Uh, could you go to the Microsoft uh, How about you define? Uh, Define non-collinear spin DMT. So non-collinear spin is when we allow the spin to we allow the spin to interact with with itself. So it it's an overlap of oh I can't think of the right word terminology right now. It's an overlap of multiple spin states, which is what we're showing in the this equation right here. So if I would add it, we could we would add the, them with nice cats. I didn't include that part of the equation. No, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I need to look up the correct terminology for that. Superposition. That's the correct terminology. <laughs> Satisfied? Yeah, I'm satisfied. Okay. That's good. Uh, anyone in person has priority to ask questions? If no, let's check uh, those who visit uh, by, by Zoom. So Dimitri says, at the second slide, out of three dimensions, which co contribute to the two dimensionality? How do we see them in the figure? So in my case, um, X and Y contribute to the dimensionality, where Z is the up-down dimension here in the figure. So if we were to think of this as a structure that can spread out in every direction where we're just looking at a small, small piece of it, we would see that they would create a film of the little diamonds. And that would be between the organic layers. And that's the thin film that we're just describing here. Mm -hmm. So Z direction is disabled for motion of electrons and X and Y is so to say, enable. Yes. Okay. Slide four. Would one add a schematic diagram, smaller thickness equals larger energy? I could probably add something like that. Um, I need something to fill this white space anyway. <laughs> yeah, just maybe use, from PowerPoint, use this like boxes, three-dimensional boxes, and do demonstration like particle in the box, sequence similar. 
Slide six. Uh, something of 100 times better could be announced at the first slide, okay? Is that supposed to be a statement? A suggestion. Oh, okay. it's not, not, not a question. But, uh, I don't know how, how others, um, maybe I'm not afraid, but it, it was a little hard to, to follow. Like, what, what's the main? Statement? Okay, I can, I can add something like that. Okay. Um, and yeah, I started speeding up, speeding up around this slide because I realized as I looked at the timer that I was going way mm -hmm. too slow. Yeah, five minutes is not very long. <laughs> um, slide seven, add a gap law equation like K equals exponential of minus DE. Yeah, that's also something I can do. Um, Amir asks, to which part of the absorption spectra your initial transition belongs to? Um, the initial transition from these or just the initial transition in the absorption spectra I mean, here? Actually, those initial transition in the, those green figures. These so ones? if you, yeah. Um, so without much <laughs> remembering, they should, um, what are they? Four, 2.3, 2.3. I remember where they all are. They're all in these higher ones here. Um, Maybe just mention. But I, I would have to check that check their specifics to be sure. Um, I think the the n equals four one is the lowest one, which would be what's one? It's the red. I think it's I think it was this two prime to two peak, but it might be the two prime to one peak. Mm -hmm. Or shoulder. And for for Amir, could we uh, focus on slide seven quickly? Just so uh, Amir, you, you see there are a lot of uh, points in this slide, right? Mm -hmm. And each point is the um, dynamics at a certain uh, initial condition. So uh, David just screens through. Anything is available to him in a like, productive way. I'm not sure I would say productive way, but <laughs> <laughs> that was a really long, tedious process. <laughs> um, Sarah asks, how do you do spin orbit calculations? 